Kere, visitor. You are about to embark on a journey of discovery through the rich and fascinating history of classical Greece. Kere, visitor, and welcome to this sacred site. This is Delphi, home of the renowned oracle. Greeks considered it the navel of the world. Pilgrims and kings journeyed here from all over Greece and beyond, seeking advice from Apollo through the voice of his interpreter, Pythia. During your visit, you will experience the sanctuary through a pilgrim's eye and discover how important oracles and prophecies were to the people of Greece. Now, go off and begin your pilgrimage. I will be waiting for you at the end of your visit. On their journey to the Temple of Apollo, pilgrims walked this sacred path up Mount Parnassus. The summer sun beat down hot on their backs. Along the way, they took in the magnificent monuments, treasuries and statues that adorned the road. These landmarks were tokens of people's reverence for the oracle's benevolence. All were dedicated to Apollo, and most were offered by cities to commemorate military victories. The monuments represented not only their donors' piety, but also their power and wealth. The sanctity of Delphi has endured to the present day, and visitors still take this very same route. One of the most impressive dedications to Apollo came from the Canidians, a Greek population that colonized the island of Lipari, north of Sicily. The story behind this dedication is notable. The Canidians were at war with the Etruscans in the Tyrrhenian Sea. Seeking a good omen, the Canidians consulted the oracle, and following her advice, they successfully captured 20 enemy ships. To thank Apollo, they offered the god the same number of statues as ships seized. <laughs> Next to the Naxian Sphinx stood a simple structure to display offerings from the Athenians, most of which were spoils of war. In particular, these offerings, called ex votos, were prows of sunken Persian ships. The Athenians built the portico after their naval victory over the Persians in 478 BCE. Once arriving before the temple, pilgrims wishing to consult the oracle had to first pay a tax. This tax gave them the initial right to approach the altar of Apollo and make an animal sacrifice to the god. But before proceeding to the Pythia, the preliminary ritual had to succeed. If the animal reacted favorably and showed signs of acceptance to the god, it was sacrificed, and the pilgrim would be allowed to enter the temple to question the Pythia. At last, we arrive at the temple of Apollo, where the oracle relayed her prophecies. The temple was the final destination of those seeking an audience with the Pythia, and its appearance matched the majesty of its purpose. Atop its imposing columns, the structure's pediments displayed famous mythological scenes sculpted by the renowned Greek artist Antenor. But as grand as the temple looked from the outside, it paled in comparison with what happened within. Prophecies were given in the most restricted part of the temple, the Aditum, by a chaste woman known as the Pythia. Before delivering prophecies, she first purified herself with water, then burned laurel leaves and barley flour to begin the ritual. Finally, while seated on a tripod surrounded by offerings, the Pythia delivered Apollo's messages. Her words were often strange and indecipherable, and required further interpretation by the temple's priests. Despite much research, the exact causes of the oracle's behavior while prophesying are debated to this day. <laughs> Myths say that while searching for an oracle who could impart their words to mortals, Apollo established a sanctuary on Mount Parnassos. Apollo took over this site by slaying its sinister guardian, the snake-like Pytho. Your visit is complete. I hope you now understand how important this sanctuary was and how it affected the lives of people both in the Greek world and beyond its borders. To be honest, I could speak about Delphi all day. But what would you like to do now? 
Ah, you wish to test your knowledge. Let's begin with a simple question. What did the oracle use to purify herself before her predictions? Correct. The oracle used water for purification. Time for another question. Which god was believed to speak through the oracle at Delphi? Yes, the oracle allegedly spoke the words of Apollo, which were then interpreted by priests. One final question for you. Delphi is situated on which mountain? Correct. Delphi stood on the slope of Mount Parnassos. Well done, traveler. Your knowledge rivals that of the wisest philosophers. As you wish. It has been a pleasure sharing Delphi with you.